curious minds. Today, we are going to talk about uh, a word that has, I think, the same root, but means kind of different things depending on how we finish it out. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about commies, but I will talk about community, communitarianism, and communes, and uh, kind of the difference between each of these words, and why when someone says to me something about community, I'm very leery. It's one of those catchphrases that uh, just, eh, I'm not sure. Um, now, now, let me explain. We're going to start with the word community. And the word community can mean a number of things. I'll read a description as, as I found it online. A community is a group of people who might live near each other or share interests. However, being in a community doesn't always mean everyone gets along or agrees with each other. Sometimes people in a community might feel left out or disagree with what others think is best. So that is a community. And I'll give some examples. I used to go to a uh, an alternative festival. And this was a festival for conspiracy theorists and, and uh, oh, I don't know, there were uh, flat earthers. I guess that's part of the conspiracy theory thing. There were health people who believed in crystal energy auras and, and that kind of thing. And and there were the just kind of a very fringe group of people. The reason I went is that a number of people who went to this festival, it was in Acapulco, Mexico, a number of the people, maybe 10% of them, were interested in philosophy and economics. And so I would go there and I met a lot of people who remain great friends today and they, I consider those people my community. And some live in the United Kingdom, and some live in Mexico, and some live in the United States, and some live in other places. But I consider the folks who I met there and formed friendships with were a community. So it's not geographically based, but it is a community. And another community that I'm a part of is the one on the, the little neck of the woods where I live. I know the gal on that side, and I know the husband and wife on this side, and there's only one more house further down, and I know that family, uh, set of families there, know them really well. As a matter of fact, they were each, uh, each set was here at some point today, um, and they came uh, for a variety of reasons. I think my wife had made some cookies or something for one of them, so he brought back some Tupperware, and then another uh, one came and helped me fix my... Uh, uh, well, help me. He fixed our propane furnace in the house. I couldn't figure it out. And he's a handy guy. Um, and so if those folks are the next door neighbors or the ones on the other side, that's it for our four mile road. But if any of those folks ever need anything, we're very anxious to help and they feel the same about us. And, and so I consider that area a community. And I might even go so far as to say that the the greater area in which we live, there's a town about 40 minutes from here, the closest little town. It happens to be the county seat also. Uh, that little town of three, four, or 5,000, something like that. Um, I don't know all the people there. So I'm, I'm not really, I wouldn't consider them my community. A little bit more so than somebody who lived uh, 3,000 miles away in you know, New York or something. But, uh, but they're still not that tight of a community as far as I'm concerned. Um, so that's kind of the first the, the first word, community. Well, there's another form of it that I think is uh, scary and bad. And let's let's look at what the the definition is online, and then we'll we'll chat a bit more about it. Online, it says communitarianism emphasizes community and collective responsibility, but critics argue it might overlook individual rights and freedoms. I'm one of those critics. Uh, people might feel pressured to conform to the group's needs, sacrificing their own beliefs or desires. Now, this, I think, is a, a horrible, bad thing. And I get that much of the world believes in communitarianism. You know, the Japanese and Chinese cultures and, and many others, there's there's no I in team is what a communitarian might say is, you know, we're all here in this country working for the betterment of everybody and, uh, you know, don't be selfish and don't want your fair share. Um, it's not about you getting your part. It's about the community getting what they want. And this is uh, this is where uh, kind of the democracy thing can come into some com uh, communitarianism type philosophies. But communitarianism is just a, it's a form of collectivism, which is a as a 
humanitarian. I hate collectivism. It's just a, a bad thing. It's bad for humans. Always has been. Um, if you like individual freedom, liberty, that kind of thing, then you don't like collectivism and you don't like communitarianism. The first person who I heard mention communitarianism was uh, Rosa, Rosa Corey, I think her name was. She wrote uh, Behind the Green Mask, a book talking about the uh, sustainability religion and, and what all the, the havoc is that it's wreaking, what its tricks are and such. And that's where I first heard communitarianism referenced. And the more that I've heard over the years, the more that it appears that that is, in fact, what the United Nations, through their sustainability program, and look it up on their website, that's what they want, is they want more uh, communitarianism. They want uh, people to live in small little areas. Of course, there'll be lots of surveillance cameras around to keep them safe, and everybody will be on a, a digital currency that the government controls. They can turn off, they can monitor it, etc. But they'll live in their own little, anywhere they need to go will be within 15 minutes. And you don't need to think about the people over on the far side. Be Be separated from them. What you should really care about is your community, the people within 15 miles, 15 minutes of you. That's really being pushed for a lot. And maybe someday I'll do a video all about that. But suffice to say for now, it's bad stuff. It's bad stuff. If you like humanitarian uh, things that are – things having to do with humanitarianism, you don't like collectivism. You don't like communitarianism. Look up some more. And, and see if you really look into what the words are. It's a, it's very similar to Marxism. And one of Marx's offshoots was communism. Another was socialism. And there are places before and after and in between. And But it, overall, Marxism. Well, collectivism and communitarianism are very much part of that. And uh, I don't like it. It's a, it's a bad thing. Now, it's a bad thing from my perspective, from my worldview, having the values that I have – now, I think that the typical person who who believed, you know, locks the, marches lockstep with the Chinese government or the North Korean government or Hitler's people or Pol Pot or Mao, whatever, those people would all say, well, no, you you shouldn't be above the community. The community is at the very top. Uh, and that's why we believe in communitarianism. Um, but yeah, that's, that's not something I believe in. L look these up and see if I'm wrong on any of these. So the last one that we're going to turn to is commune. And I actually have a friend who is interested in starting a commune. He's actually making substantial headway toward doing so. And first, let me read you the definition of commune, and then we'll chat a bit more about it. In a commune, people live together and share things, but this can lead to conflicts over resources, work, and personal space. Not everyone might agree on how things are shared or managed, and some might feel their efforts aren't equally matched by others. So that's kind of the commune idea is not only do we live near each other, but some things are communally owned and maintained and managed and such. And so this was the idea that the all the famous uh, genocidal people or communists, whatever you want to call them, uh, Mao was a great example. Um, this is kind of the thought was that you won't own anything. The community owns stuff. I mean, you can own your own toothbrush, but you can't own – the means to produce something commercially. Um, you can own a broom for your house, but actually that's pushing it. And if your neighbor needs to borrow it, they have a right to. Um, these are many of the rules that have gone into communes. And one of the reasons I am opposed to communes and don't have a lot of high hopes for them are that they generally, throughout history, have not worked out well. Now, communities have worked out just fine, but communes haven't. And the challenge becomes when things are communal, when nobody has a right to a, uh, a tractor and everyone chips in some money and then everybody has a right to use the tractor whenever they want or, or whatever the thing on the wall says. And there have been very smart people, central planners, who have tried to come up with good systems for, well – all the other times people have tried to share tractors, there's been one person who has always treated it very poorly and worn out the tractor, and then they don't do any cleaning, they don't do any of the maintenance, and then there's somebody else who's really handy, they're a hard worker, and they do a bunch of work on it, but they don't get all the good out of it. 
thus the term from each according to their ability to each according to their need. So this is part of communism. Communes are generally. I don't think that this can work well. I think that the free market is just so good at making things work, uh, respecting other people's property and saying, hey, Bill, I see you have a nice tractor. I want to go do some plowing or lift something heavy. Um, what do you, what's it running now to, to rent it for an hour? And then Bill tells me, and I'll either do it or not. And if I don't do it, then I'm going to go look for another tractor that I can rent for my purposes. And it just so happens that if I'm thinking it's only worth 20 bucks to, to rent a $50,000 tractor for an hour, that's not enough to even pay for the fuel in it or, or the whatever little error that I'm going to make that's going to scratch it or it needs to be maintained and greased and all this stuff. So that is way too little. If someone on the other hand said, and this is in 2023 money, if someone else said, okay, for one hour, $2,000, I'd say, no, that's, that's too much. Um, I, I don't want to do that. And there would probably be someone who would pop up who has a tractor that would suit my needs that would do it for a much more reasonable amount, 50 or 100 bucks or 200 bucks, something like that for an hour. And there it solved. The free market solved it. The problem with communes is that you never know how to perfectly centrally plan and manage every little thing. And thus, I don't think it's a good way to, to go about living in a community. Like you can live in a community, but not have it be a commune. I think there are other solutions to that. So lastly, we talked about communes. Before that, we talked about communitarianism. And before that, community. Um, you are a part of my community. I even think that it says on uh, YouTube, uh, there's a, a tab that says community. And that's where we can leave messages and such for each other till I'm kicked off. Um, that's great that we are part of this community. Something that makes communities okay is, can you guess it? Consent! Consent is king! <laughs> Just like the answer to almost every other thing. Hey, is this thing okay? Is it, or is it not okay? It comes back down to that same thing. Consent. So much in life comes down to consent. So... If you want to be in my community and I want to be in your community, then, hey, we're we're members of the same community. Yeehaw. That's great. Sorry if Larkin uh, copyrighted that yeehaw. I shouldn't be trying to take that. That's his intellectual property. For those of you who think that I'm serious, uh, it's, it's well worth um, checking out some of the videos on that on disenthrall.me. There's a YouTube channel and better yet, an Odyssey channel. Go check out intellectual property stuff there. And then you'll understand why I'm saying it with a, a smirk. Um, if it's a group of people who want to get together and consensually be members of the same geographic area or other type of community, awesome. More power. That's great. Uh, my neighbor wanted to borrow my welder. It's just a little tiny uh, wire, flex core wire welder. And he has a big, huge, heavy duty thing. He's used to welding his bulldozer, or his, you know, skid steer or whatever. And so when he wanted to use something for a tiny job, he came and borrowed mine. Well, when my, one of my trailers broke, I put it together. I welded it together as best I could with my little tiny welder that I took out in the field with a generator, but it wasn't strong enough for the long term. Took it down to his house and he used his big heavy duty welder to really make sure it would last long term. So we chose, we voluntarily chose to help each other out and loan each other equipment. And it works out. Now, usually when he does work for me, I pay him. He's way handier. He has way more equipment. So it, it can't always be a barter back and forth. So usually I pay him. But days like today when he stopped by for five, ten minutes and fixed the propane furnace, he's not going to bill me for that. He just did that as a good neighbor. He did it voluntarily. He did it consensually. Consent was the big thing. And we get along beautifully. And I do with other people in other communities that are more spread out geographically. Again, think about these concepts. If I'm wrong, please tell me how I'm wrong. Use the Reels method, R-E-E-L-S. Look it up. I invented it. Look it up. Make sure I didn't invent the method. I invented that little uh, acronym for it. <laughs> so look that up. Make sure that you agree with me. If you don't, please tell me where I've got it wrong. Please correct me. Help me find the error of my ways. And other than that, I'll look forward to being back here 
next Saturday at six. And by the way, I promise Saturdays at sixes through the end of 2023. So got a couple more maybe, um, but definitely this coming week, I'll do what I say. You'll see a new video here next Saturday at 6 p.m.